Bill, market's not quite frozen. A lot going on there. Give us your take. Well, people know I'm opinionated, but it's the gold cartel doing their thing again. And, and uh, they attacked a week ago, uh, Wednesday. They started taking gold and silver straight down. And we I've been talking there for weeks about first notice day and uh, uh, the March silver contract. And sure enough, uh, silver's gone from 1620 back down to about 1550, erased the entire bull move from when these so-called commercials uh, be began to go short after fleecing the specs being short on the, on the uh, uh, you know, fleece them, they've made a profit on almost every trade. What's your take on that? What's behind this market action, Bill Murphy? Well, you know, the gold cartel wants the gold price down in silver, and, and the open interest had gone berserk 50,000 contracts uh, in a short period of time, and now they're liquidating the specs law, and they just want to keep, get the price down. I'm hoping that my thinking of uh, the physical market being that tight and a big change is still there. That doesn't mean they won't attack, as they've just done. We had the Fed meeting minutes recently, and it did surprise the markets a bit. I mean, investors weren't quite expecting this Fed stance. We've also seen a return to this risk-on trade as investors just can't get enough of U.S. shares. What do you think? Well, again, I'm prejudiced, but uh, Secretary Munchen said that's what was going to happen uh, back around Christmas when, when uh, he said that we're organizing the plunge protection team. <laughs> It's been straight up ever since. End of story. And, and of course, there are other, th other factors and the change in the Fed outlook and so on. But, you know, it's all been orchestrated and the Fed caved. And, of course, you know, gold and silver are not allowed to re reflect that to any great degree. Let's also talk about this obvious trade war issue. Talks over the weekend, I believe it was Friday, it was with China, the White House. Is this a non-event to you or does this have teeth and just what do you think it means for the precious metals? Well, it's this way, that way, this way, that way. It's going on forever, and it's, it's so tedious. It's a big deal, of course, but it's very tedious. But uh, it, it's hard to say what it's going to mean because nobody seems to know what's really going to occur. Obviously, it's a factor. We don't know exactly how big of a factor it is. You know, one of our recent guests, Michael Pinto, pointed out that he and Dr. Stephen Leap, they're not terribly concerned by the trade war. They seem to think that it would really have to roll on substantially for 6 to 12 more months at least, that we'd have to see that 15% bump up on $200 billion in imports, of course, from mainland China before that really impacted our trading partners and or our uh, uh, you know, domestic output. Well, you know, in terms of gold, uh, I mean, there's a lot of the comment, it's all well said, but so what? I mean, the fundamentals that should have sent gold much higher for years haven't meant a thing. The only thing, in my opinion, that matters is whether the gold cartel is running short of enough physical gold to keep the price down. And I'm hoping that that's what has occurred uh, these past months. And we, I've heard reports of it for some time. And, and then Ross Norman of Charles Pixley confirmed that the gold market's very tight. And if they're really starting to hit the wall there like they just did in Palladium, we've got some good times coming. But the rest of these fundamentals haven't meant a thing. I mean, gold, gold's gone up, as, as you know, uh, without the dollar doing a thing. Great segue into Palladium. The shiny metal Palladium. I mean, this thing, Bill Murphy, I'll bet you remember what it was trading between two, three, four hundred dollars an ounce recently eclipsed the yellow metal. Last week we were looking at least 50 dollars 50 to 100 dollars above gold we've never seen that before platinum did show some signs of life especially last week but in no way is closing the gap between palladium and platinum i'm going to guess we have still at least a 500 dollar gap platinum well below palladium that's just an inversion of the typical market do you have any comments well yes it's it's a precursor of what's coming for gold and silver i think and uh they can't do anything about the platinum situation, pardon me, palladium situation because of supply issues. Again, that's what I think is, is in, uh, in the process of occurring in gold. And in my opinion, once gold takes off, as that you know physical supply issue becomes a bigger and bigger deal, all of a sudden the silver guys are going to wake up and everyone's going to want the available physical silver, and silver will explode out of nowhere. And that's what I think is coming.
Bill Murphy, I think we've just accidentally stumbled, or maybe it was your intention, onto the solution. What is done with the yellow metal and the white gold platinum? They're hoarded. They're stockpiled. They're rarely used in industrial applications. So now let's flip that on its head. Palladium, not stockpiled for the most part until recently. Silver, not stockpiled. Used and consumed because it's relatively inexpensive. Supply and demand highly inelastic. It wasn't stockpiled. The markets were caught flat-footed, and a similar eruption could be coming. Your thoughts? Well, again, I'm prejudiced, and I don't know how J.P. Morgan has kept the price down here for so long, but they've done it. And I, I just think that if we're correct about the gold physical market being tight, and that's the key factor, and yes, they can attack and take it down like they're doing now and break trend lines, it's not going to hold, and they won't have the supply to keep keep doing what they're doing, and we're going to start going up again. And that, when, when gold takes off, will spook the silver people, which is such a tiny market, as you well know, and all of a sudden, everyone's going to go after supply. And when that happens, you're correct. I think silver's going to explode this year. Two things I'd like to ask you. Firstly, do you expect a force majeure? I mean, when you start to talk about people going after supply, we've already made it clear supply and demand highly inelastic, and available stockpiles are limited. If we can go by most of the sources that we've heard here on the show, especially Rob Kirby, you know, up in Canada, he deals in size. He says there's not much. And by the way, you know, of course, the Russian central bank, Putin there is stockpiling silver. This is one of the first times that I'm aware of in decades where actual central bankers decided to diversify among their precious metals. So you may be onto something here. Then the second point that I think you raised, that's our fine friends at JPM. As I'm sure you, you know and you've written about extensively and talked on the show, now in their bank vaults, you know, literally under the building, they, you know, they let the silver price go up to near 50 in 2011. The open interest on the COMEX was 135,000 contracts all the way up to near the end. In other words, they weren't there. Now, until recently, the silver open interest went up to 224,000 contracts. It's J.P. Morgan and their allies doing everything they can to, to suppress the price. And I don't know whether it's to help them with gold or whatever, but this has gone on forever. And it's got to end sometime, and hopefully it's sooner rather than later. But it's... If they do it over and over again. You got first notice day in March silver. Sure enough, the silver price plummets. They're forcing the specs out. They just do the same thing, and they keep getting away with it. And it's aggravating to say the least, but when it ends, it's going to be explosive, I think. Do you care to maybe speculate on just how this plays out? I know you've talked about it occurring, this end game, this, of course, mad dash into silver. Can you also maybe make a case that this might be a more steady ascent where we run to 27 to 30, we taper for a while, all the shorts come in, they get excited, and we run to 39.45, builds them some momentum, and just plows through 50, 49, 50 like it wasn't even there, and then we slice up to 75, shorts again pile in, and they are disappointed as we top three figures. How does that play out in Bill Murphy's book? <laughs> Sounds good. Waiting too long for that. It's, it's coming, Chris. It's just we've got to see a sign of a change, and as I mentioned earlier, I think that the physical gold market's going to be the key. That follows palladium, and the next thing you know, the silver shorts, when, when the buyers come in and want the physical supply that's there, and the next thing you know, out of nowhere, silver just explodes. Last word to Bill Murphy at Gata.org and, of course, La Metropole Cafe. Why don't you bring the ball into the end zone? Tell everybody a little bit more about your sites, what they can find, and just why they need to bookmark. Well, you can go to Gata.org, and Chris Powell does a great job, and they can get on his list. And I've had La Metropole Cafe going for 20 and a half years now, and people can sign up for a two-week free trial and see it is of interest. And uh, we've got a lot of excitement coming, Chris. It's been a rough few years, but that's going to change. It sure looks like it. I mean, that's the tenor of the markets. I think you'd agree. I mean, we're seeing uh, even the XAU come alive. And I'm sure you'll recall back in, what was it, 2001, 2002, even 2003, it was really the XAU that seemed to lead us out of those doldrums, those 20-year doldrums. So I like seeing some of these levered plays 
picking up companies, all good signs. There's no new big fines on the horizon. You know, CNBC totally agrees with you. He's calling for 1400 to 1500 gold. You know, I mean, the darling of Wall Street agrees with La Metropole Cafe and Midas.org. Bill Murphy, always the best stuff. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chris. Anytime. The blockchain revolution is transforming the global arena, disrupting every industry in its path. Goldseek.com is excited to introduce an off-the-chain opportunity in digital gold and silver from our friends at Atmex and Sprott.com. One Gold holds physical gold and silver medals at the Royal Canadian Mint, the first online marketplace to offer secure and convenient buying, selling, and redemption of digital precious metals. One Gold uses Vault Chain, a secure, immutable blockchain ledger developed by Tradewind Market. Markets, the leading innovator in digital precious metals distributed ledger and blockchain technology. Vault Chain. Gold and silver are 100% redeemable through one gold. For physical precious metals delivered to customers' doors in any size at competitive prices and low transaction storage costs. As a special offer and for a limited time only, one gold is offering gold and silver at spot price with no additional premiums. OneGold.com is secure and accessible 24-7 on any device, offering convenient purchases and sales of precious metals. Easy recurring transactions make passive saving and gold dollar cost averaging as easy as a single mouse click. Vault Chain offers the best tier pricing on AppMex products, setting the industry standard as a fully backed physical asset with easy redemption in coins, rounds, or bars, offering clients peace of mind and full transparency. Don't get left behind. Remember to bookmark OneGold.com for the safest and most convenient digital precious metals today. Remember, OneGold. GoldSeek employees may or may not own shares. Nothing contained herein should be construed as investment advice. Investment advice. Investment.